spirit of independence. Resistance. They think we're all completely mad. <laughs> In my search to find my own path in life, I came across a town called Lewis. Nestled between the South Downs National Park, it's said to harbor a creative community with a rebellious spirit. I set out to meet the locals to see if I can learn how to live a more independent life. First signs of an independent spirit are shown in its history. I'm meeting a local historian to learn about a significant rebellion which happened here, the Battle of Lewis. The Battle of Lewis in 1264 is probably one of the most important battles in English history. It's one of these rare occasions when the rebels, if that's what you want to call them, um, capture the King of England and his son. The royalists um, were holed up in the priory at Lewis. The king was there with a, a few thousand other uh, royalists. Um, the priory was set on fire with flaming arrows and eventually the royalists had to surrender to the Montfort. As a result of that in, in Lewis, uh, an agreement was signed with Henry III and Simon de Montfort was able to extract conditions from the king which led to the establishment of our English Parliament. For the first time following uh, the, the victory at, at Lewis, ordinary townspeople have a say in how this country is run. Because of what had happened here, the king, a symbol of ultimate authority, now had to recognise the ordinary person's voice. This was not the last time Lewis witnessed such defiance. In the 16th century, the town saw a resistance so strong, it still fuels the fires of what Lewis is famed for today. Bonfire. Bonfire is a very, very special event. Its origins go way back. During the reign of Queen Mary, a number of people were put to death here because they refused to worship as Catholics. It's a celebration of independence. You can take to the streets, you can put these on, you can say what you like. We're standing up for free speech. Having survived bonfire, I'm off to meet the people who make up the town. The first place I'm visiting is the town hall. I've uh, been coming to this town for about uh, 55 years. There's a lot of uh, people have strong views here. We have this phrase, we won't be druv. Won't be druv. We won't be druv. We won't be druv. Uh, some years ago, when um, uh, parking meters were first put in in Lewis, somebody went around and, and stuffed them with fireworks and, uh, and destroyed them. They're not interested in being pushed around, and they, they do their best to, to, to let other people know. So there's no shortage of debate or uh, campaigning organisations. But I think a lot of it is, is tradition as well. You know, I mean, we have the oldest photographic studio in the world here. My great-grandfather 
moved in here in 1858 and so we've been operating as a photographic studio in the family for over 160 years now. All the negatives have been kept. On the father's estimation, there are about, about five tonnes of glass plates, which is about, I don't know, over a quarter of a million images on glass. So there you've got a soldier. People have likened it to Lewis's family album because people have been coming in here for generations and generations. People come in and have their family portraits taken because they've got a picture of their great-grandmother sitting in the same chair and we can still reproduce that. Well, it's like where you're sitting now, you know, there's, there's hundreds of thousands of people who've walked down the passage, you know, from, from 1850 till now and sat exactly in that same point and had their picture taken. If you were trying to find out about the spirit of Lewis, mm -hmm. what would you definitely want to include in there? Well, you have to include Harvey's Brewery, wouldn't you? Because that's sort of quintessentially Lewis. The studio is a mirror to the past that provides the community with a sense of belonging. I wonder how the town's brewery will compare. Harvey's is like a walk through our brewing heritage. I mean, the processes that we're using are unchanged over centuries. The, the nature of the um, plant itself is such that we are perpetuating an age-old tradition of brewing. It is hands-on and that it is dependent upon human beings. It's not automated. The history, as I say, has gone through uh, eight generations of John Harvey's descendants uh, actively involved with the company and operating from the same site that he started the brewery on. One of the most special awards we uh, won was the um, Supreme Championship of the International Beer Challenge in London and it was for a beer called Prince of Denmark that we do. But we've been champion best bitter of uh, Great Britain on two occasions. We have a philosophy that we want to be local brewers and we trade within a 60 mile radius of the brewery. There is a danger if you become ubiquitous and people can get you anywhere because you lose that local pride and the desire of people when they come to this area of the country to sample the local beer. And I think also environmentally it's a very good policy to have. I think the whole climate change issue is something that's taken very seriously here. Uh, in fact, most of our grass verges in the town are now not cut very often in order to encourage wildflowers. And people actually, there's a group that goes and plants, uh, sows wildflower seeds. Um, I think that's very typical of uh, people's concern for, for the environment here in Lewis. Harvey's showed me an appreciation for others and the environment. This inspired me to check out the cultural centre of the town and one of Europe's greenest cinemas. So to be a, a green cinema as such is a, is a long journey. We've got a very close relationship with Mace Butchers, who's a local butcher. She used to deliver her meat in plastic uh, and we told her about how we want to work and she completely agreed and now delivers in paper to all her customers. Being the greenest, it, um, it, it sounds grand, it's, it's not particularly an, an ambition. Um, our ambition is to, to really do as much as we can and keep on looking at, at where we can reduce our, our carbon footprint. I don't think Lewis the residents um, understood the type of cinema that we were going to put here. A community cinema, an art house cinema, or a cinema that's really talking and engaged with the community, what that can bring, everybody realises that now. But when we opened our gates, the building was kind of everybody's, and very quickly everybody claimed this as, as theirs. What I hear is that people go, oh, let's meet, shall we go to a depot or somewhere else? The, the function of depot within the community, I think I'm almost more proud of than the fact that we've put a cinema here. A good energy or good vibes or like-minded people often at attract like-minded people. Uh, so I think Lewis has been seen as a creative hub for quite a long time. And then when, there, when there's creativity, things happen.
The independent spirit of Lewis is attractive to many creators. I wandered off to meet some of the artistic community. Lewis is my demographic. It's a, uh, uh, you know, quite bohemian, liberal, free-thinking. Principally, I make paint. I make paint for homes and I make paint for artists. But my colours are sort of called things like, you've art directed the arse out of that, which I think, you know, hopefully shows a little bit of humour. If I can get the curious to come in and say, oh, I'm not going to buy anything, can I just take a photo? I mean, I'd like some of your money, but that's okay. Take a photo. I mean, that's quite nice. It makes you feel good. You know, I'm not an artist, but I am an artist. This is my, this is my way of, you know, expressing myself through a shop. Going against the grain, it's rewarding. I mean, the fact that Lewis has a noun for itself I mean, Londoners, New Yorkers, and Louisians, they have a very artistic bent on the world. We could say some, that a town is cocky and would mean something quite positive, or we could say it's snotty and would mean something quite neg negative, but they're two sides of the same thing. It's cussedness and awkwardness and stubborn sense of itself, as in won't do what you want. Spirit that uh, the town has always cultivated, as far as I can see. You know, I got the oil painting to college and oil painting and acrylic and all the other things. But some towns are sort of quite pretty and they seem, Lewis has got a bit of an edge. You can walk around and you can be quite spooked by the town sometimes. You know, it's got a, you, you said, a sense of power to it that uh, it's hard to put into words. Quite a high proportion of people who are actually paddling their own canoe in the town, which is one of the things that makes it quite lively and interesting. Is there some kind of um, independent spirit here, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, but not as independent as people think looking from the outside. So people think Bonfire is is absolutely wild affair. There's nothing wild about it. It's very, very controlled, very carefully organised. I mean, the habit goes a certain way, you know, it, 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 but there's limits. You know, it, it's, nobody wants to do criminal damage. Nobody wants anybody to get hurt. Sometimes people miss the point about Bonfire, which is that it's a community thing. It's really like, I mean, there's, there's half a dozen uh, Bonfire societies and they're all like families. I'm a life member. Quite pleased and proud to be one, really, because they're only about every society's only got a couple of dozen life members out of a thousand membership. And it's cradle to grave as well. You know, we, we've been photographing the Bonfire Fancy Dress competition for over 25 years now, and there were kids there when we started who have now grown up and have got children of their own, and they're wearing the same costumes that their parents did. Families spend their life raising money for charity within bonfire celebrations. It's, it's moved on. Kids, teenage kids, are doing what they would have done 50 years ago, working in conjunction with older people. You know, my son is, is, would always come back for bonfire. And it's not exclusive, you know, people would come in. Some people have come into bonfire, have hardly been in the town uh, very long at all, and, they, and they've brought in all this amount to the table. Community is just really important. You need to talk to your neighbours. I've just moved out of Lewis and I'm going to get to know everybody in my street and, and make sure that we look after each other. I think it's crucial, really. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, how do I define what? Independence. Independence. Um, I think it's probably a psychological state because no one is do totally independent. I mean, if financial independence, very rare. I don't think anyone's completely independent. You know, we're dependent on society, we're dependent on the customers that come into our shops, we're dependent on the, you know, the, the, the trains working. My experience is that uh, most human situations are interdependent and that we're all entangled with one, with one another. We need personal independence, but I think also it's very important that we, you know, that we live as a community and, and that means depending on other people. It's, it's all about relationships and 
you know, communicating with people and that sort of thing. If you're going to be independent, you've got to appreciate other people's independence. I wanted to learn from the people of Lewis about living a more independent life. Surprisingly, the real lesson was how engaged they were with their community. They taught me my path in life is unique, but ultimately a part of a bigger picture. That I should consider how I'll fit in relation to others. But that doesn't mean I can't set things on fire. Fighting for days.